often need to discuss continuous systems. This beam has the properties of mass, springiness, and damping. But these properties are distributed, not concentrated as they would be in the single degree of freedom system model. If the beam has mass and springiness, it must have at least one natural frequency. Now I've clamped the beam to the table, and I'll pluck it to create free vibration at the cantilever beam's first natural bending frequency. Notice that damping or friction within the beam gradually reduces the magnitude of response. I'm going to pluck the beam again, but this time I'll use a stroboscopic light that I've pre-adjusted close to the beam's natural frequency. I've turned off the room light. It seems to be vibrating slowly at about one hertz. Let's use the electrodynamic shaker again to experiment with forced vibration of a cantilever beam. We'll commence at a very low forcing frequency, two hertz. We are controlling the shaker force and frequency with a TrigTech 701 sweep generator. Observe the motion of the beam. At this very low forcing frequency, the entire beam moves as a solid body. There are no resonance effects. But as we go upward in frequency, we note considerable resonant magnification. As we don't want to break the beam or damage the shaker, we'll reduce the electrical power driving the shaker. Now we can safely further increase the forcing frequency. There, we've arrived at a maximum of response at our first resonance at the beam's first natural frequency, about 7.4 hertz. Again, we've turned off the room lights so we can watch the beam as illuminated by a 6.4 hertz strobe light. Remember, the beam is still responding at 7.4 hertz, though it appears to be responding at 1 hertz. How long does it take to achieve large resonant response? Let's find out by holding the tip of the beam and then releasing it. I haven't changed the shaker controls at all, but it takes several cycles to achieve large dynamic response. That's a bit like pushing a child in a swing, isn't it? You have to push a number of cycles at the proper forcing frequency in order to achieve resonance. That's why sinusoidal testing specifications dictate a slow sweeping speed in order that resonances are achieved. You will recognize that resonant wall tests or any sustained resonance in transport or service can be very damaging. The pattern of beam response at this first resonance is called the first bending mode. As we increase the forcing frequency above the first resonance, we find that resonant magnification decreases. As we pass through 20, 40, and 60 hertz, nothing seems to be happening. Aha, something is happening now. We've found a second resonance, another bending mode, at 84 hertz. Note that this mode is characterized by a point of zero vertical motion, right here. This point is called a node. This point of large displacement right here is called an anti-node. Note also that the tip of the beam is moving with large displacement. The total motion can be seen better with the room lights reduced using the strobe light at 86 hertz. Notice the torsion, the lack of translation, the phase change across the node. When the anti-node moves up, the tip moves down, and vice versa. The presence of one node identifies this second bending resonant mode. Here's a rule for you to remember. The number of the mode equals the number of nodes, which you count, plus one. As we further increase our forcing frequency, the second mode disappears. Eventually, we should find the third bending mode. 
But unfortunately, the response displacement is very small. Our source of vibration can't excite the beam enough for us to see the mode shape. How can we tell what response, if any, is occurring? It appears that nothing is happening. But if I sprinkle some salt on the beam, and then search for another resonance, Here at 268 hertz, we see the granules migrate away from the anti-nodes and collect at the nodes. See? Two nodes. Two nodes plus one equals three, our third bending mode. Now let's move a little further upward in frequency, a resonance search while I sprinkle more salt on the beam. Aha! Here at 557 hertz, we find another resonance. The granules are migrating into three nodes. This must be the fourth mode. And further upward in frequency, we can identify additional modes. The fifth at 940 hertz. The sixth at 1450 hertz. And so forth. Let's make a big jump in frequency now. Here at 3,540 hertz, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nodes. So this must be the ninth mode. Let's look at the transmissibility curve we might have obtained from this experiment. Note the peaks at 7.4 hertz, 84 hertz. 268 hertz, 557 hertz, and 940 hertz. 